Hey everybody, this is Fracture. Uh, I've been meaning to put together a comprehensive tutorial series for quite some time now, and on top of school and work, I found it hard to dedicate more work time to record and edit some quality videos. So for now, I've decided to put away the CSGO, Brawlhalla, and PUBG that I usually occupy myself with on leisure to try and bring you guys some deep insight into how I produce music, do sound design, use my MIDI controllers, and record cool performance videos. Before I get started with plugging in any hardware or pumping out some fat beats, I want to go over some basics of Ableton Live. I won't be going terribly deep in detail, but there will be just enough for you complete beginners to get your feet wet. As a note, I'm using Ableton Live 9, and if you have any questions beyond this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will try my best to respond. Anyway, so let's begin. Arrangement view versus session view. Um, so what is arrangement view? When we go over here to Ableton, we go to the top right corner, we have these two buttons. One of them is to select the Arrangement View, which is the top one, and the bottom one is to select Session View. So, Arrangement View is more conventional. It's like a, a timeline or a sequence of how your composition is going to sound. Uh, we will come back to Arrangement View much later when we cover recording or more composition-related topics, but for now, let's focus on Session View. So if we go right here. Session view is great. It's perfect for messing around with MIDI controllers, isolating the different sections in your compositions, and it's exactly what you need to do a quote-unquote live performance with Ableton Live. What you see here is a grid of slots. Uh, each column belongs to a audio or a MIDI track, which if you don't know the difference between an audio track and a MIDI track, I'll briefly touch on that as well. Uh, each row is called a scene. You can insert more scenes, and here, if I right-click over here and click Insert Scene, you can see that um, it spreads across all of your audio and MIDI tracks and created new empty slots. So, what are audio and MIDI tracks exactly? For those of you who have done any tiny bit of music production, the answer is probably obvious, but for those who haven't, I like to explain with a simple analogy. Let's say your computer is a robot musician sitting in front of you, and you are a special kind of composer. Your computer has two ways of generating any kind of sound. It has a cassette player that can play any number of cassettes given to it, and it has a set of instruments. Now, if you want it to play any of the cassettes, it's super easy. You just hand a cassette to it, ask it to press play, and it does. If you want it to play instruments, it's slightly more complicated. Uh, your computer doesn't actually know how to play the instruments by themselves, but if you write down some specific instructions like play this note for this long or play this chord at this time, it will do so perfectly. Instead of writing formal sheet music, you just draw your instructions across a simple grid where the y-axis represents semitones reflective of a piano and the x-axis represents time. This is, in a super simplified way, sort of the distinction between MIDI and audio tracks. Uh, in a MIDI track, MIDI data is provided as instructions telling your computer how to play a certain virtual instrument in terms of how long, at what velocity, what pitch, etc, etc. An audio track uses recorded or fully exported audio files in the form of samples or loops and plays them back for you. In one scenario, your computer takes your instructions on the spot and plays an instrument for you, and in the other scenario, your computer is merely just playing back a recorded piece of audio for you.